The Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, has compelled me to speak regarding quite a bit of information that he revealed to me. In, um, in that video, the street preaching in Kamloops, at the United Church in Kamloops, that congregation was mixed. There were some believers there and some weren't. The, uh, the churches get rented out for events, and uh, they rent out to pagan um, events also. What the Holy Spirit has put in my heart is while I was there, I was in a, uh, I was staying in a parking lot at a certain church there, and um, I really do, I am thankful for that. And what the Holy Spirit showed me while I was in that parking lot is that first of all, um, there were drug deals going on at nighttime in that parking lot. There's uh, people just trampling over that parking lot. Um, vehicles driving in, driving out. There were, um, when I pulled up that one night after ministering, there were th there was three people sitting on the parking blocks in the parking lot. And um, I kindly explained to them that, that I was staying there overnight. And they, they kind of looked at me like, um, there was just no expression. It's like they were zombies, like they were dead. And I asked them if they wanted to read the Word of God. And one uh, youth, he stood up and just said no. And then they walked away. And then after that, it was it was uh, during the night, there were kids that went into that parking lot. And they were just swearing like the devil. And the Holy Spirit revealed to me that it's from the parents, it's from society. That's the condition. And what he showed me is that that parking lot is the outer court. And he showed me that in Revelation 11, verse 2, 1 and 2, says that, Do not measure the outer court, for it has been given over to the Gentiles. They shall trample over the holy city for forty and two months. Here in Revelation 11, 2. So what is happening, that represents the outer court of the, of the church building. Uh, the holy place is in the sanctuary where, all, where they all gather. And then the, pa the pastor's office is the holiest of holies. And that outer court is a reflection of the condition of the church. The uh, tabernacle of Moses in the outer court was where the people went to the altar to put their the sacrifices on the altar. And of course, God is using the, the um, um, he uses all things. However, um, that parking lot has become a haunt of jackals and a, and a cage for every foul and unclean bird. And that is, that is Babylon that's in that parking lot. They have no respect whatsoever for the congregation and they're taking it over. They're running over the church. They're trampling over that outer court. They're doing that right now. These things happen in various places, various degrees. And uh, it's not only happening, you know, as, it hap as, as the Holy Spirit shall be there, that's happening in the entire world. Uh, they they are, are, are warring against the covenant, and they've even told me that in a friendly handshake. You know, one uh, a, a, a girl, she told me that um, in Calgary, and she shook my hand. It's like, you know, I'm warring against you. We are warring against you. We are not children of, of Jesus Christ. We are children of the world. We are children of Satan. We are Wiccans. We are whatever association they, they happen to be. And they are even politely waging war. They're trampling over the, the, the children of the covenant. That's their job. That's what they're doing. That's the resolve that the devil has put in their hearts to do. And the Bible says, let the filthy continue to be filthy. Let the wicked continue to be wicked. Let the holy continue to be holy. Let the righteous continue to be holy. And so the entire world is sealed. And what's happening is that a human being, a person, is a seed. And that seed, after being sealed, it, that person is a seed that is carried over into the um, uh, the times after the seven trumpets sounds, and that needs to germinate and manifest now completely physically, and through ministering the word, um, the uh, that manifestation happens. Uh, they they need to hear the word of God. Uh, the Bible says that uh, faith comes from hearing, and hearing is is only of the word of God, and that is a um, and but how can it hear unless a preacher is is sent? Okay, and that that is why. Uh, that the Holy Spirit has put in my heart to do what I'm doing. Now, uh, also regarding that is 
uh, there's a few things I'd like to speak regarding. First of all, in Judges 16, speaks regarding how Samson gave into a seductive spirit. Now, the church is Samson, and the seductive spirit is, is Delilah, okay, is that spirit, that, that bird of the air, that demonic spirit that is attacking and persecuting the church, that comes in seductively, comes in as nicely, and, and, but, but then seduces the church. And what happened is Samson, he gave in to the seductive spirit, and he, um, he basically handed over everything to that spirit, his power. And what happened with Samson is that his hair needed to grow back before he was able to gain his strength back. And so getting our, the, the strength back involves going under the rod, you see. And going under the rod, you know, Samson was in captivity. He was blind for a time. He was, he was, actually, he was permanently blind. And he was uh, in captivity. And during that time of ca captivity, he reflected. And he was ready to die for the Lord, to prove to God that he, is an act, that he was faithful to God at, at the very end. And that's what he did. And what God did is he stretched Samson out. In uh, Genesis 1-7, says that God stretched out the heavens and the earth, the two waters, the earth and heaven. And, and, and in the midst thereof, he, put, he placed a firmament. And this is sky, and that's also the universe. And that is between earth and heaven. So God made a firmament and separated the waters which are under the firmament from the waters which are above the firmament. And it was so. God called the firmament heaven and there was evening and there was morning a second day. So what God is doing, God is stretching out the creation. He's stretching a human being out from the earth to heaven and then he's, then he's getting an answer. He says, my word will never come back to me void. He says, I need an answer. I'm going to get an answer. And that's how he does it. And whether the answer is good or bad, God is going to get an answer from all humanity. And how he's doing that is he is having people pass under the rod. Uh, here in um, Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 36, speaks regarding these matters. And there are two rods. There's the rod of Lucifer, Satan, the devil. There's the rod of Jesus Christ. In Ezekiel chapter 20, 36 to 38, says here in 36, As I entered into judgment with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so I will enter into judgment with you, says the Lord God. I will make you pass under the rod, and I will let you go in by number. I will purge out the rebels from among you, and those who transgress against me, I will bring them out of the land where they sojourn. But they shall not enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord." So God is purging out the congregation. He's purging out the church by having them pass under the rod. And that is also through visitation. Uh, the uh, congregation, is, it was, was uh, many of them, they were mocking me. Uh, because it, it, it was, it's, it, it is a, it's ran of women. And um, there was just a few, not all of them. But there are the ones that are very vocal, the ones that are very, um, they're tossing their ways over the border and they're persecuting the work that they're seeing, the ministers that are sent to them. And that's part of this ministry. And in doing so, um, they're giving God the answer of, of what the, the condition is. And in doing so, they're actually hurting themselves even more and just mocking because the Holy Spirit revealed, because of their own insecurities, because of their own shortcomings with God. And many of them are just workers of iniquity. And that's what they're there to do. They just want to continue having their, their good times. They don't want to be uh, taught. They don't want to conform. They don't want to be humble and, and, and meet before God. They don't want to, to surrender whatever they need to surrender in order to have that relationship with Christ. They don't want that. They want to continue serving their flesh. And, uh, you know, I was mocked at regarding having a, because of my bank account. I never even mentioned my bank account, but that I had to park in the parking lot. And, and other things. And um, this is the Hegelian language of the devil. And the way the, the, uh, the devil speaks, he, he actually prophesizes things that you're doing through a person. And they don't even know it. They're just speaking in Hegelian language, whatever comes in their spirit. And it's the devil speaking through them. That's what it is. And, and God is judging it all. He's saying, I'm going to make you pass under the rod. I will let you go in by number. I will purge out the rebels from among you. And those who transgress against me, 
and this is transgression against his people. I will bring them out, as uh, 1 John, I think it's 1 John uh, chapter 4, verse 20 or so. I will bring those who transgress against me, I will bring them out of the land where they sojourn, but they shall not enter the land of Israel. Then you know that I am the Lord. So they're going to be end up, they're going to end up in hellfire for an eternity. And then they're going to pass under the, uh, the or they're going to pass under the rod, the ultimate rod, where they serve their gods, and then they stand before God, humbled, hopefully, at the white throne judgment. In uh, verse, it says here, As for you, O house of Israel, thus is the Lord God, go and serve every one of you his idols, now and hereafter, if you will not listen to me. But my holy name you shall not pr profane any more with your gifts and your altars. And these are gifts and altars, you know, to, 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 uh, to Lucifer, to the, to the seductive spirits. For only on my holy mountain, the mountain height of Israel, says the Lord God, there all the house of Israel, all of them, shall serve me in the land where I will accept them. And, and, and you see, there I will require your contributions and your choices of your gifts. This is going under the rod, offering our gifts as we're climbing up the holy mountain. As we're climbing up, getting closer to God, we're climbing up Mount Sinai, Mount, Mount um, Horrible. And, and, and then and we're being disciplined, we're being chastised, we're passing under his rod of discipline. And then we're getting, we're getting um, perfected, we're getting purged. You see, we're, we're allowing God to do all these things in our lives. And we give him gifts. Gifts is the fruit of our lips. We offer him ourselves. The more that we become refined, the more better the, uh, the, the offering to God. In Ezekiel chapter 7, also speaks regarding this. In Ezekiel chapter 7, in verse 10, says, Behold the day, behold, it comes. Your doom has come. It's happening now. This is right now has come, injustice has blossomed, and that's also arrogance, and blossomed, and pride has budded, violence has grown up into a rod of wickedness, none of them shall remain, nor, nor their abundance, nor their wealth, neither shall there be any preeminence among them. Uh, that's, uh, and this is, this is, a, this is a, a judgment of wrath, and neither shall there be any preeminence among them, for the time has come, the day draws near, and that's the day of the Lord. Let not the buyer rejoice nor the seller mourn, for wrath is upon all their multitude. And that is the wrath of Lucifer, because they've been given handed over to the devil. And they're passing under the rod of the devil. They're being stretched out by the devil, because they can't go and do, and do service to God anymore. They're, they're, they're done. It says, it says, it says here that it's the process stretched out is... Um, a process that is out of reach for most, being uh, stretched out all the way to God, uh, to, to heaven, where, we can, where he, we're heard in His throne room. Where we break through the clouds, break through the darkness, break through the darkness of our flesh, and, and, and be humble and meek and contrite and lowly in heart before the, before the Lord and contrite in spirit. And let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn. And I've experienced this physically. This is happening right now. It's been happening for a few years. And, and I've experienced all this for the wrath of all their multitude, physically and spiritually, for the seller shall not return to what he has sold while he yet lives. So that stuff is gone. God is saying you're never going to have to renew it again because the time is now. The time is now. The day of the Lord is now. For wrath is upon or this, this means that it's eminent. For the seller shall not return to what he has sold while he liveth. For wrath is upon all their multitude, it shall not turn back. And because of his iniquity, none can maintain his life. It's sealed. They can't do it anymore. There is no, there's nothing left. It's a seed that needs to manifest. Now, and, and that's Revelation 11, 1 and 2. Also, outer court given to the Gentiles shall trod under the city for, for 42 months. Now, this is, that's also 1 Peter 4, 16 to, to 19, where judgment begins with the household of God. So judgment begins with us. What happened to the unrighteous, to the ungodly, to the sinner, if the righteous man is scarcely saved? And 
And this is exactly what is happening, is the church is like a fish hook for the, for the children of Lucifer. They continue to chase the covenant. They, they're relentless. They're not going to stop. They want the New World Order. They want to wipe out Christianity. They want to do their sin. They want their sold out. They have this vision that, that Lucifer has given them that they're going to have free, it's, a free, it's going to be a free society. They're going to be given, you know, money. They're going to be given all, they won't have to work. It's going to be a free society. It's going to be a better place to live. It's going to just be, you know, uh, like the 60s. Uh, what was it there where they had that, um, uh, that um, I forget what it, it was called. And uh, it was that uh, peace movement and stuff that they were doing. I forget what it was called. And uh, stretched out by Lucifer, Satan, and the devil. So there are those that are stretched out of Lucifer, Satan, and the devil, and there are those that are stretched out of Jesus Christ. And this is that 666 and 777. And anything that's lukewarm, you see here, this is the judgment. It's various degrees. Uh, those that are lukewarm are going to end up in hell, someplace in hell, wherever they might end up being. Um, some are going to be into worse punishment and some in less punishment, but this generation is the generation that will see the most amount of people go into the pit, is this generation, the generation of its wrath, where we're, where we're